Valtrin Network. What's up, guys? Uh, it's Uz here from the DC vs. Marvel podcast. Once again, joined by my boy Eds, um, wearing an amazing uh, Guardians of the Galaxy uh, top, man. That that is, uh, you know, what? I've seen those online. I thought that is actually quite a, quite a sweet top. You know what I mean? <laughs> but yeah, uh, now Eds has got it. I can't. I can't wear it now because nah. so, he he makes it, it look cooler would, cooler catch, than me. That's the... it would catch fire in your DC ridden <laughs> Yeah, that would be that would be hilarious, man. If literally like <laughs> any Marvel product that you buy just self destructs. Like if you're a DC, if you're a DC fan, some kind of AI inside it detects what is going on, man. But we, yeah, we are not here today to talk about uh, Marvel versus DC. We are in the middle once again to be talking about star wars and as you know from the title uh, we are going to be talking about the mandalorian season two episode two the um, passenger and- <laughs> the passenger yeah and if any of you guys um kind of you know saw uh film Gloms live stream you kind of have a spoiler as to already what i thought about this about this uh thing there already um but yeah we'll we'll get we'll get into it man because uh yeah um it's something i guess <laughs> right? uh, i've so, got an opinion man when we get into it, i've got an opinion to say. yeah know. yeah yeah so um so uh, last time we didn't really go too much into the story about episode one so uh let's go to a little bit more about this obviously this is uh still the mandalorian is trying to search for uh more mandalorians um and we kind of finished the previous episode there where boba fett was kind of looking over a hill at here meets got Boba Fett's armor and uh, he'd gone into this next kind of um, situation there where he's trying to find um, you know uh, more Mandalorians basically and um, it's once again um, you know th- this situation where he encounters people from you know different spheres different kind of outposts and stuff like that uh, and they lead him onto another clue which leads on to another clue which leads yeah. on to another clue um, and in this we got the situation where He'd been led on to another clue, which is basically where he met this kind of frog lady. Um, And this frog lady basically was taking her frog spawn to some planet, uh, basically where her husband was there to, I guess, inseminate these these frog spawns or whatever. Um, And then basically go and put them uh, them so they they were safe on this planet. And apparently the frog frog man i guess you can call him i guess because uh she was called the frog lady um was um knew something about the mandalorians had some kind of clue Possibly. about the mandalorians potentially yeah. some yeah. some kind of thing that is going on right so that's the that's the setup of of what is going on so what did you think overall about this before we go into the you know each kind of little bit about the about the thing there well it it I'm torn in two people in, in two halves. Generally, that's how the Mandalorian is, but with this episode especially, because on one hand, if I was like ten years old watching this, I'd think this is the coolest shit. I'd be like, I love this. This is cool. I spiders is like crazy, and there's X wings, and there's all this like ah, the babies eating the eggs and all this stuff. But then the grown up me, like we spoke about with episode one, wants broader storytellings interconnectivity mm-hmm. that more of a overarching rather than this little monster of the week thing and i have to ask myself that are we spoiled has hbo programming and netflix and showtime has it ruined the way we enjoy a television show because yeah if we were kids younger more innocent fresher virgin minds we'd be loving this <laughs> we wouldn't be um... complaining because everything about it generally is cool it looks great the effects are crazy especially this being a tv show like and and the thing the thing is this is funny you should say that because uh my son was pissing himself laughing at the child munching the eggs right yeah he's like he's eating the baby he's eating the baby (laughs) found it the funniest thing ever right whereas i'm just like okay fair enough you know Um, i don't know whether he is truly eating those eggs but we'll get into after you give you. Okay, a- fair enough. Um, yeah, so you know he's, um, you know he's, he's doing that, and I think you're kind of right. It is aimed at that, aimed at that kind of audience. Mm. But at the same time, I think uh, a lot of these, a lot of these programs, they fall into this trap, right? And this trap is basically like, um, you show something, and you and you're like, 
oh, can you remember how cool this thing was? Mm. Or can you remember how cool this thing was? And mm. then it's like, you know, um, it, it's meant to trigger this thing in your mind, right? To be like, oh, yeah, yeah, that was amazing. That was amazing. But then afterwards, you're like, you're left with some emptiness, right? Because there's no substance there to to the entire thing, right? So, Especially with this episode, because it didn't have a bloody end. Like, if it had an end, it would have just been that bit more. But it just kind of just stopped. Yeah. I mean, I, when I was watching this, it was kind of like, okay, can you remember the X-Wings? Remember how cool they were, right? And it's yeah. like, yeah, okay. Uh, can you remember that thing in Alien where, the, you know, with the, where the face huggers come out? Can you remember how cool that was? Yeah, it's like it's like that. And, you know, uh, remember that giant spider? Do you remember Shelob uh, in yeah. Lord of the Rings? Do you remember how cool that was? It, it's kind of like that. Like, they're showing those kind of things. And I guess if, you're, if you are a child and you're watching it, and it's like, okay, uh, I, I've never seen lord of the rings i've never seen alien that you yeah, none, the ref, all no, the references yeah you don't yeah. no kid's gonna have seen alien right this would and have been like, great for like the school yeah. yard the next day this would just be yeah like, there would have been like you know this is like so cool to kind of to kind yeah. of see basically right the other thing that is in this is like um it, it's interesting because um they have uh, you know, the, obviously the Mandalorian is the Mandalorian. They're heavily trained. They're like they're like the Spartans kind of off yeah. this universe, right? Um, but even like these guys who are like the rebels, right? The Rebel Alliance, okay, they are like a ragtag bunch of soldiers and stuff like that. They don't miss. They literally don't miss when they're shooting something. It's like, you know, every single thing that they aim at gets flipping shot and i don't know whether they got some advanced targeting ai or something like that right but literally like every single thing they want to hit is like bam 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 bang and it's like a massive it's hilarious because you've got this like you've got this like army of of people who are basically like either uh in the new lot they're kind of grown from you know from they're stolen as as children and then trained up to become you know uh stormtroopers or in the previous ones there were clones oh, and they were from day one like trained to become whatever <laughs> they miss everything right? yeah <laughs> everything <laughs> they literally miss everything and these guys the rebels are just like the sharp shooters of the flipping world man they're literally just like aiming and destroying like literally absolutely everything so that i always it always kind of strikes me as a little bit odd when I see stuff like that because um, it makes you it makes you kind of I guess if you're a kid and you're looking at that you're like yeah they're the heroes they're cool they can shoot properly stuff like that but then you also think at the same time like this military might of this other other empire is like actually pathetic because apart from their massive ships if they get you on the ground you could probably destroy them quite easily yeah. because because you know they're never gonna they're never gonna be able to get you. Um, they rely on these huge machines to to defeat you, kind of thing. That is the that is the kind of thing which and I guess you, and the ability just to throw bodies at a problem just on yeah. mass. Yeah, and just, the, and I just not, I just not care about yeah. it, man. So, um, so yeah, so uh, so you said he had a theory about what he's doing to the eggs right i think he's incubating them i think something's going to happen to the rest of those eggs they're going to be proved to be damaged or some other if it does continue which it has to mm -hmm. if it doesn't then that's this whole season's a write-off if it just suddenly onto some next thing but yeah i reckon something's gonna happen to the rest of them eggs and she's gonna be like oh no in her frog language my line is ended it's done what am i gonna do like what's the point of living and then baby old is gonna just tug on her skirt and he's gonna be Bleh. And he's gonna like pop <laughs> yeah. it up like four of these, three or four of these eggs that he ate. Okay, okay, the interesting. Last, yeah, I don't think the he's last, even, yeah, the last vestiges of these eggs. He's, he's kind of got some kind of intelligence that exactly that he knows is. something's going on. That's why I think he's he was trying to help her by doing that. But yeah, eggs. yeah. That's so that's the thing. I mean, this is weird because they obviously had that thing, that Boba Fett kind of thing there in the previous one. And it's like, okay, that seems to have ended like on that episode, right? I guess some way down the line, we're going to encounter this, right? Whereas this frog episode seems to be going, is now going to be going on for a second one, right? And it's like, okay, uh, you know, it was, it was just like, 
okay, you know, he's he's done his thing, he's gone and you know they crash landed on this area and blah blah and it, you know he's trying to trying to escape um the rebels and all that kind of stuff. Um and now this frog story is gonna go on, which is probably I don't know, like if you wrote that down on the page, right? And you're like, okay, we're gonna he's gonna encounter this frog woman right and Mm. basically she's got to go to planet take her eggs there and eggs have got to get fertilized by this by her husband and then be put in this place because the last kind of place where they can actually have the frog children being born and stuff like that Uh, can you imagine writing that down on a page and then looking at it and being like Mm. yes Mm. this is the story we're going for (laughs) (laughs) Uh, all the stories you could you could make up in that entire universe it's just oh my god it's just bizarre the thing is you know for me i kind of you know i i don't mind individual stories but i kind of i'm coming a bit more to your way of thinking when i'm looking at stuff like this i'm like okay do you know what in every single place there could be something that they've encountered right so say for example they landed on this planet or whatever Mm -hmm there could be something there, like some kind of, you know, some kind of uh, thing because they go, you know, they're, they're trying to follow this pathway of, you know, uh, her husband maybe knowing something about this, uh, about the Mandalorian or whatever. So they could have landed on this planet and on that planet, there could have been some kind of artifact and he just ends up collecting these artifacts, not knowing what they are and no sign of it, them being anything due to anything and then that kind of culminates towards the end mm. right now it's kind of like i don't know it's weird because when i watched season two of star trek i watched it and i was like oh this is really not good right and then now when you watch season three of that mm. it's actually coming together as quite a nice kind of story oh discovery yeah discovery yeah, right yeah, yeah. so um so i actually i watched that yesterday i watched like four episodes yesterday it's actually pretty good isn't it? Uh, yeah it was actually all right and you kind of think okay you would watch that through but with this i'm thinking would i want to watch this like if it was all released in one go would it's it reminds me a bit of like doom patrol where it's like okay one episode to keep you going and then another one which is kind of like okay there's a bit of filler here and then another good one and then and then another half size one or whatever um i don't know i i can't i can't i can understand how people like it but i can't understand how people love the mandalorian yeah the that's crazy the fever yeah that's that's a bit curious you have to be a diehard like a crazy Star Wars fan to kind of deny the issues of it. But then that's the thing though. That's what, that goes back to what I said at the beginning. It's like, are we spot for feeling like these small little serialized episodes is a bad thing? Cause some people are able just to let go of their other problems, switch off the brain and just enjoy this one little adventure and just accept it just for what it is. They don't really care about the bigger. Yeah. I mean, oh. I, I mean, in a, in a way, I guess that's partially true. Yeah. All but then at the same like time, that. all television used to be like that. But the one thing that I would say is kind of um, when you're looking at, you know, old TV, there used to be something like super cool that would happen in each episode, whether it's like two, three minutes or something that you'd be like, okay, I remember that kind of thing. So when you're, when you're watching this, I guess when those, you know, the two experts turn up, that's the yeah. thing that all the kids are going to be talking about the next day. Saying, and oh, I did see those X wings, like and you know, the whatever. ice spiders that given them that. And the ice spiders, yeah, 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 and the ice spiders and stuff, right? But it's like, um, at the same time, you kind of think, okay, um, you know, this guy is obviously on this quest, and he's, you know, he's he's doing what he's got to do, and he's basically going to the outer rim now, which is kind of lawless. Um, but the new republic is there, and things like that, and it's kind of like the outer rim was kind of like where the first order were there as well. They kind of, you know, turned up in the in the outer rim from the um, from the books that they released, right? So um, it, it's interesting to kind of think, okay, maybe is he going to encounter something like that, but what kind of concerns me is this reminds me a lot of some of the stuff that happened in game of thrones where it's like they didn't in game of thrones when it came to the last bit they didn't tie up like loads of stuff they didn't they didn't, just didn't bother right yeah. and in this it's kind of like okay um you see the 
you see the previous episode, right? And it's like, okay, it's it's fan service to bring Boba Fett into it. It's fan service to say, oh, look, it's actually, you know, Tamara Morrison there, the clone who's standing looking at the thingy. But then that's what brings the person to watch the next episode. And then you watch the next episode and it's absolutely nothing to do with that previous thread. Then you think to yourself, okay, what's there to make me watch the next episode? Do I want to watch the conclusion of the frog lady getting her eggs fertilized? <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? It's, it's kind of that episode, the way it ended, was kind of like um, Titans when it ended. It was like, what the hell? Why have you ended it here? So, so, yeah. It's just, it's, so, when, the, when the credits just popped up, I was like, oh, what? Really? Did I skip something? Is like the internet cut out or something? Like I did not. Yeah, get, it was just abrupt. And the first, the first episode was fifty-four minutes. This one was forty-three minutes, right? So, so that's the thing. That's why when it came up, I was like, "What? Okay, mm. isn't there better be another ten minutes or whatever here, or or you know what?" And it seemed like exactly the same as Titans, where they were just like, "Okay, yeah, Trigon's here." See you later. Done. <laughs> you know, make sure yeah. you watch. Make sure you watch the next series I'm, or whatever. I'm getting a bit worried. Like, I'm finding it hard to get excited for the idea of all these other Star Wars themed shows. There, there have been news this week about um, the Boba Fett show that might happen that they could start shooting next week if they felt like it. The the Ahsoka spin off that they're talking about. The, uh, the what's his face one. Like the reason reason issues I have is that is it is the success of because it has been successful generally the Mandalorian are they just going to feel like okay we'll just take this template and use it for all of these so are all of these shows just going to be week to week adventures are they all going to have the same is John Favreau going to be brought on to executive produce all of these shows and all just going to have this way of storytelling and that just if they do then it's interesting because when you when you say the guy who basically was in charge of all of this kind of stuff, Dave Filoni, and obviously they've got mm. John Favreau to kind of bring a more cinematic presence to this yeah. kind of thing. Um, you know, I was saying last week that I kind of fell down a rabbit hole and started watching like old cartoons on on Disney Plus and stuff. Yeah. Um, me, me and the kids, we started watching the last season of uh, Clone Wars. Right, never seen. That, you know, never seen it before, right? So basically, oh, the bit that I ah! <laughs> oh, <no! laughs> the bit, the bit ah! that I, the bit that I seen up to was the um was when uh Obi Wan fought fought Maul the first time, right? Yeah, and it was like that's the bit that I saw up to, right? Um, and then after that, I didn't see. I think that season five, right? So um, so the last two seasons I haven't I haven't kind of seen it. And we're watching it, and it's like okay, it's not everything well. about it is amazing. It's yeah. like the music, the atmosphere, the um, the storyline, it's it's even like... the cinematography of it. And it actually started to have longer form storytelling. It, it wasn't just this little like occasionally they had a little filler now and again, but yeah, that's yeah. what was good about that show that it became this legit. Thing, yeah. yeah, and I love the way they tied everything up in it. That is basically like Ahsoka was there, and you know she's she's kind of like deciding to go and lead this battle, whatever. And then you start hearing like the stuff from Episode Three, where you know they're enacting Order Sixty Six, and Anakin's mm-hmm. like there, and you know he's killing the young and all this kind of stuff. And you're like, damn, they've actually linked that in, and it shows what then happens to Ahsoka and Darth Maul at that at that kind of point right and that kind of stuff i really like because it's like okay you can tell another story at the same time where you think okay that story is closed off and that story is about anakin skywalker and the skywalker family and all this mm. kind of stuff and how come there's these other jedi how come there's like ezra Bridger and you know and the soka and all this kind of stuff and they did it so cleverly that I, that's the reason why i think people um give so much um uh give so much kind of uh leeway to uh, Dave Filoni right yeah. because when he's doing something like this and you think okay mate uh, yeah it's not quite right because of all that goodwill that he's got from you know clone wars and the and the and rebels and all that kind of stuff um you kind of think okay well this guy has the potential to create yeah. some awesomeness right um but this is one of the things when I see this 
when I see the Mandalorian there as well, mm-hmm. um, it, it, it's decent and I like watching it and stuff like that. Um, but I, you know, you were saying last time that you like to see all the stuff that is around the, you know, the universe of, of mm-hmm. the Jedi and stuff like that. For me, I kind of have to think now after watching Clone Wars there again that I'd rather see a story involving the wider Jedi kind of, you know, uh, conflict and stuff like that going into it. Because I kind of, it, there's kind of a bit of magic missing in The Mandalorian. It's good, but there's a magical element that's missing in there that is like, you know, yeah. Yeah. I mean, for example, obviously there was. The, the you know the rebels they came in there they were shooting all this kind of stuff stuff like that um okay that's great but i know it's cliched but if if they basically saw a glow and these kind of these spiders are getting killed and then there's some random shadow with a lightsaber mm. and imagine if it's a red lightsaber right <laughs> and yeah, it's just killing yeah, all of these cool. spiders and then disappears you'd be like you'd be like, what the hell is going on here? And that would, you know, obviously all the kids would be talking about that again, but also mm-hmm. then as well, it'd be, you know, you'd be thinking, damn, what the hell was that? Is that Maul? Is that somebody else? Or is that, you know, uh, some yeah. other person there in this? So um, there'll be all the, it, it was like uh, in the in the first, um, in the first Star Wars, in The Force Awakens, right? Uh, was it Force Awakens? Yeah, with Snoke. Mm. And and all the internet chatter was about who is Snoke, you know, uh, what's his background, what's yeah. what's what does he want to do, all this kind of stuff, right? Um, I think the Mandalorian is missing that. It's missing that chatter where it's like, okay, what's going to happen now? What is that mystery? You know, stuff like that. Yeah. Another thing that is missing from the Mandalorian, I think, is that form of storytelling where we follow one character. And then, you know, that chapter would end within that an episode. And then it will go to another character, even if it's like the antagonist, just to see what they're doing and what they're planning and plotting and what they're up to. Like, we never get that. It's always just with this Mandalorian. And we never really get a sense of what else is happening in this world or what who, who's, who's going after them. I want to see the... El Polo Loco, he, that's what he'll always be known as to me. I want to see him and what he's plotting and what he's up to and him dispatching people to go after him. Like, I want to see that dude. And I want to know how the fuck he got that black lightsaber. That, yeah. That negative one. How did he get that? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Because that's a Mandalorian exactly, dark yeah. saber, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's, that is the thing. That is, um, uh, that's like, there's a wider universe missing, right? It's yeah. very kind of closed in yeah um mind and, as much this little adventure of the week if we did get a, a broader sense of what other people are up to and it would occasionally cut to some other fingers that was like the game of thrones storytelling or even the lord of the Rings storytelling you see one little group then go off and see someone else and then da-da-da-da and back yeah yeah so you can't you'd basically see like the good guys and then you'd see um what's it called saruman like yeah. making his orc army and stuff like that yeah, <laughs> like yeah. okay there's gonna be some crazy yeah. stuff going Different on groups. here is is like somebody um somebody made a video cut of this like can you um remember this show back in the day it's called the littlest hobo oh yeah it's like yeah. about this about this dog, dog that would go yeah. and help people and somebody cut the theme music into that with the mandalorian <laughs> because that's basically what you it has that tone. It does. It really does have that tone. <laughs> it's literally like it's literally like oh, you know. Um, the thing is, like, there's so many like things like that that when you know when um, some of these things came out before like we were even born, but stuff like Flipper and Skippy, yeah, and yeah. Stuff, Skippy. stuff like that. Big Ben or well, Gentle Ben was it the bear? Oh, gentle Ben. <laughs> yeah, wow. stuff like that. That's basically what it's like. It's like this Love dude you. is just going from play. Yeah, exactly. He's going from place to place, like being like, oh, how can I help you? How can I help you? How can is I do that? Is that a genre? Like, is there a name for that? Like the black booty, the lassie, like it's at the, in the 70s. There seemed to just be this whole yeah, genre yeah. of just animals going around helping people. <laughs> like, how the hell did you even write? If you're a writer, that has to be soul destroying that you're you have to write an episode where some random uh, animal has to save a village or something like that. That's gonna be the most. And that's the thing that, 
<laughs> those are the days when they literally just abuse the shit out of these animals to yeah, try and get them to, they probably to got get through them to like do five per season. Just <laughs> exactly. them off. Yeah, just just like okay, we, we need you to go do this one thing and just beating it. And until how it, many it. members got mauled to death by a gentleman? Oh. Someone had to have <laughs> at least a slashing across the face. Of oh, there's probably a shitload of gentlemen. <laughs> just like, just well, like they're, they're in people's people. wardrobes now because they've been turned into like coats for their wives and shit. Yeah, exactly. So, well, they should they should have they should have gone crazy on that. They should have gone like um like a snake. Like they have a snake that goes from place to place, like <laughs> helping people, or like a crocodile or some shit. That would, wow. be the, that would have been wow. way way better, man. So um so yeah. So what uh, what's your um uh, before we go into ratings? What do you reckon is gonna be is gonna be the sphere now? Where it's we know obviously he's going to help this frog lady and stuff like that. Mm. But where do you think this is going? Right, because a lot of the time you watch these shows, you kind of tell where these things are going. Right. I really, I, to credit to it, I really don't know how it, this could tie up. Would it be satisfactory to see a whole other planet of Yodas? Would it break the mystique? So I don't know if they really want to do that because there is that mystique of these isolated little beings. Is the baby a clone or where did it come from? Like, who's cloning it? Is it Yoda's mm. clock? Like, it could go anywhere. It could go a bunch of places. So I'm not really sure. But the fact that he's looking for Mandalorians, aren't you a bit annoyed that there was a bunch of them last season and then they've all disappeared. Like, there's no way to contact them. Couldn't they have told him mm. all this stuff before everything went to crap? Yeah. Uh, yeah like you know that's that's the that is the thing yeah, like he's hoping they can tell him where there are more of that being that the baby belongs to but, uh, yeah just just bizarre storyline basically it it's just like it to me it just doesn't seem to my my mom has this uh has this spray uh this saying uh which she says in Punjabi, which means uh, says nasir nafer which basically means no head no feet Right, and she always <laughs> says the kind of thing where she's watching a program that doesn't seem to be going anywhere, right? Where it's like yeah, there's no yeah, head, no feet, and it's rolling just like, around. <laughs> where, where is this? it's just ambling, basically, right? So, uh, so that's the way that I kind of feel feel this this show is at the moment. And and okay, it's a it's a pleasant watch, okay, yeah. But at the same time, it's like. I kind of feel like I wasted 45 minutes. Of my it doesn't, life. Yeah, it that doesn't life. feel like it matters. Like we said, you could miss episode one and it wouldn't make a difference to this season. You could miss the first two episodes and it may, you've lost nothing in the storytelling of whatever the overarching aim is. And yeah. if they do do a, Mandal- uh, a Boba Fett show, would you be happy just seeing the actor going about or that? Does he have to have the get up to truly be Boba Fett satisfyingly? Because that was what made Boba Fett cool. Mm. No, he has to. He has to have the get up. Yeah. The, I, ne- I never, I never liked Boba Fett to be honest. But I used to think this dude literally got killed in <laughs> like second. I didn't see why people thought it was cool. It's just the in look. Em- it's just his look. Yeah. In Empire yeah. Strikes Back, he was kind of cool, right? Mm. But in Return of the Jedi, he just, he just got his. Last yeah. handed to him by Luke, right? Yeah. So, um, so yeah, he was never. I was, I always thought Han Solo was cool. I never kind of thought, and yeah. uh, you know, I never liked Boba Fett, but in, in a way, I kind of think, okay, um, part of it is he has to have that, but then if he has that and he's doing the same kind of things that yeah. the Mandalorian is doing, that's it, you can't have both, it? I, I, I don't get it, I honestly don't get why you'd release a Boba Fett when you've got so many other potential stories that you could be could be telling mm. um you know bounty hunter stories smuggler That's stories what boba fett should be about it should be a legit or what was that show that the aborted one that lucas was going to make that was going to be on the planet it was really going to be like this underworld of the crime and the seediness of it all and that would have been so cool within a star trek world that they kind of just have you ever have you ever played the game the the online one the knights of the old republic never played it because it was it's an rpg in it and i'm really into yeah I, I i've played it i played it for a while and like really leveled up my character quite a lot yeah. um but then after a while it's just like oh it's just repetitive 
repetitive yeah. kind of stuff. I like love the world of it, the lore of the Old Republic, but yeah, the mm. game, yeah, a bit too drawn out for me. But one of the things about it is it did have that kind of thing. Like you'd go to a planet and you'd end up going to a city and mm. that city, parts of the city will be run by the authorities. Other parts will be run by a crime syndicate. Other bit will be run by the yeah. huts. It'll just be this kind of like... Yeah, yeah. kind of like what everyone's excited for the game that's about to come out next month. Uh, Cyber, Cyberpunk 2077. If that was like a show that looked like that within the... Just like... Rah! People, that would be, yeah, with, as yeah. long as it has long form storytelling. But because you know, be uh, that, that's the thing where it's like I always love those ones where it's like a real dystopian kind yes. of yes, kind of because because the thing is, it's in Star Wars, it always seems like everybody's having a great time. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, mate, you know, there's gonna be some CD. CD bastards. Yeah, man. I want to see what the huts give me the worst of what the huts are like and the things that they do and pimping alien chicks like slave girls and all of these things. Like, I want to, yeah, give me, give me that. But yeah, Disney just never going to go there, man. So no, it's going to, that's the thing. I mean, the Boba Fett stuff they're only bringing because of that. I, I, I have hope for an Ahsoka kind of thing, but it's kind of like, I, I don't know how far can they go in that without yeah. it going into the law of the force awakens you know because as that goes along it's kind of like okay is you know there's going to be luke then training up the next lot and you know uh is how could she encounter luke when luke is you know doing that kind of thing yeah yeah, it could be it's gonna be interesting because yeah but i hope they make the extra effort because the fact that you know they've got rosario dawson there they don't want to waste that actress because they're going to be paying her a lot but like they're yeah. going to make an effort with this hopefully <laughs> hopefully we'll see yeah. so what's your rating for this episode of the mandalorian out of i would give it out of five because that's your that's that's your okay. kind of spare i guess out of uh five lightsabers i shall give it it's uh i'll just say three just because it looked nice at the very least, it may not, mm-hmm. it may not build up anything, but at least it looked cool. And I saw X wings, which I haven't seen in a while, so that was nice. Yeah, but I'm kind of, yeah, I'm kind of between a two and a three. I just, I, I just kind of like I look at it, and it just reminds me of when I watch stuff like Titans, or when I watch stuff like. Um, uh, you know, when I watch stuff like Doom Patrol, mm. and it's just one episode where it's just like, why did they put that in? Yeah. You know, it's just, you know, there's there's so much more story to tell, and it's just like this is just this is just you know silly. I, I think part of the charm of Star Wars is all those silly aliens and stuff like that there that you kind of see, yeah. and I guess they tried to kind of really do that there now. Um, but it's it's one of those things where we're going to have to see the season as a whole, and then obviously see. Judging were some on, of these yeah. episodes were worth it or not man so um yeah guys you can let us know uh what you think about the mandalorian episode two uh you can email us on uh, dcbsmarvelpod at gmail.com uh also go to the facebook page which is DCBS Marvel podcast um and also go to the uh youtube page there as well uh we're on voltron network um and I don't know where this will go. Will this go in the in the DC vs. Marvel podcast uh, playlist or what? But yeah. it'll be on the Voltron network somewhere. Yeah, yeah. It'll be on the page. I guess we might have to make a new little uh, playlist for it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so it'll be it'll, it'll, it'll be you'll find it somewhere on there. Um and uh yeah, you uh, we will be back soon with the with the main DC vs. Marvel podcast. But when something moment, happens, I think the election's gonna shut everything down, but that's the thing. So yeah. we're waiting for some waiting for some big news, um, you know, or just, you know, just enough news so we can really kind of get into it and talk about it there, basically. Mm. Um, and uh, and yeah, then we'll bring that there to you. Uh, in the meantime, if you're uh, starving for um, kind of stuff on movies and all that kind of stuff, then you can check Ed's out on uh, the other podcast. There. Talking at the movies and all podcasting platforms and also Vulture Network. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we'll see you again next time. See ya.